Welcome to our Minuteman Moment, an airman's podcast, a show designed to highlight what the 189th Airlift Wing and its airmen are doing for the communities around us, the state of Arkansas, and our nation. I'm Melody Daniel, and today we're joined by Major Tom Gillibo and Staff Sergeant Heather Metzler from the 189th Safety Office, and we're talking about an innovative initiative that they've developed here at the Wing. Thanks for joining us, and please tell us a little about yourselves. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Melody, for uh, allowing us to do this. So, yeah, as I said, I'm Major Tom Gillow. I'm the Chief of Safety of the 189th uh, Airlift Wing, and uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Heather Metzler uh, works for us as well in the safety shop. That's right. Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant Heather Metzler. Happy to be here today. So we're here today to talk about the General Aviation Safety Cluster. Tell me how that cluster came to be, uh, the thought process behind it, and how we got to where we are today. Sure, absolutely. So we, um, So the purpose of the General Aviation Assembly Cluster is mainly to bring awareness for our General Aviation Flyers. There's a lot of times where the flyers kind of feel isolated and they, uh, they, don't, they just go out to the airport, they go fly, and then they go home. And there's not always the community that they can get together and be able to talk about flying and, and safety things with flying. So in the safety office, we were, sitting, or we were sitting in the office and we were talking about how we could do reach out for, um, for flying for General Aviation in some off-duty safety programs. Yes, it, and the reason too is that general aviation is vast, and so it can encompass people that have uh, aircraft that, uh, frankly, is the wing is a parachute, and they have the engine strapped to their back, uh, all the way to former uh, warbirds, uh, former aircraft that are actually used by countries to fight wars. So. That's where we kind of saw, and we actually took the Air Force Safety Management System, which is an incredibly vast integrated system that takes in the individual as well as the organization and then also exterior factors to help make the safest type of scenario that you can. But the way they do that, Melody, is through the teach, uh, teaching of knowledge as well as education uh, for, um, for safety, for flying. And so we want to take that for uh, general aviation with people that are inside this wing. Uh, as well as people that uh, pretty much have access to Little Rock Air Force Base. Uh, everyone can come uh, join and we can teach, uh, frankly, to fly safe in the general aviation environment. And how often do you guys meet? So we normally meet once a month during drill weekend and we try to meet on Sundays at 10 a.m. in Building 106. So that's our, always our goal. So Major Gillibo, you and I were talking and this isn't something that's standard across the Air Force and, and in fact if this is not the only uh, wing level general aviation safety cluster, um, it, it's definitely one of the few. So tell me why that's important and also the benefits that our wing can realize from that. Absolutely. So when we say that there's nothing else like this in the Air Force, there is not a general aviation assembly cluster associated with the wing. So one of the things that they're was uh, back in the day, and there are still a few uh, um, still around, are called aero clubs, which the wing uh, or the base installation actually has general aviation aircraft, and that has a club for members to check out these aircraft. The issue with that is that is actually going away. Um, in kind of reality, that is a very, very high liability as well it's a very high cost that that we have um so what has happened though is people that enjoy flying in general aviation will still do it they'll rent aircraft they'll buy aircraft and the need to still operate safely in that environment is still there so that's what this um the cluster allows uh, people to do is still um get in a, in an unofficial area and talk about how to actually fly these aircraft so let's harp on safety for a little bit. Inside this general aviation group, there seems to be a broad range of experience and backgrounds. How do you prioritize safety as a focus when we know that inherently flying in aviation can be a very risky business? Um, what is this cluster doing to make sure that people fight complacency in the course of their daily activities and specifically regarding their aviation duties? Right, really what you're describing there is flight discipline, which we are both studying um, a book called Flight Discipline by Tony Kern and you see a lot of discipline. We were just talking about that. The military builds that in. And it, it's built in so well, you, you, you really don't even recognize it's there until you've really started looking at it. But for general aviation pilots, they may not always have that discipline. And so for a military member that goes out and flies, 
they they do have the discipline. It's it's in there in them. They understand that, and then they may see some of their other folks in general aviation going, well, I can skip this today. I don't really need to do this today. And so what we're trying to do is trying to just bring those two items together so that it's like, you know, safety is safety. Whether you're in the military or whether you're in the civilian world, we're still operating an aircraft and it still needs to be safe. We don't need to be complacent and we need to continue to have good flight discipline. And that's a whole nother discussion right there just talking about flight discipline. Absolutely. So oh. you're saying y'all will come back for a flight discipline topic on, on the podcast? <laughs> actually, if you want, yeah. Um, is that, actually, that totally integrates both military flying, because frankly, for air crew, that is an evaluate. We get evaluated on flight discipline, and it's pass or fail. So someone told me a while back that it is the obligation of experienced pilots to make inexperienced pilots experienced. And that is... Frankly, that's what we're doing. Uh, there are both militarily and civilian, there are pilots in this wing that work for, uh, on the side, work for charter companies, own flight schools, uh, there's airline pilots, there are mechanics, there are inspectors. There is a litany of experience out there. And then also we have people that just enjoy flying. And we have private pilots, we have student pilots, recreational pilots, drone pilots. And so it is this cluster is literally that it's a cluster to get all this experience together and learn from each other and to make to make flying safe one of the questions i wanted to ask was how this will impact safety long term outside of the obvious factors that we've already discussed um, how long has this group been organized yeah you, i guess our first meeting was february yeah so right. a couple a couple months right june well i mean it's just all it, yeah. it's fun so it all just blurs together <laughs> And have you seen any improvements or impacts to safety since the inception of the General Aviation Group? It allows people to critically think. And it allows them, this is in the forefront because they're going to it as a group, and they're thinking about it. They're thinking about how are they flying, both militarily as well as in the General Aviation Rule, and I, I've seen that. Uh, I've seen people talking about uh, information. I've seen uh, people making better decisions when it comes to uh, everything from weather to how their aircraft is operating. So that, that is the big, it's the dissemination of knowledge. I've seen where it's built relationships too, because it's really important to have the relationship with other pilots and be comfortable with going, hey, I, I was doing this the other day and I'm kind of curious about whether this was safe or not, or, or I'm thinking about doing this, this is really what we want to be. I'm thinking about doing this and I need to know more about it. And so building those relationships and knowing who you can go to and feel comfortable doing that, that's helped a lot too. Relationships are one of the greatest aspects of successful organizations. A very good friend of mine has a saying that it's better to exchange business cards now and build relationships while everything is looking good than to try to build those relationships while we're overcoming a major incident, uh, you know, disaster or other type of crisis event. Uh, that being said, talk to me a little more about the other uh, military aviation aspect we have in the state with our partners over at the 77th Theater Aviation Brigade. How would the addition of some rotary wing people benefit this aviation cluster? Absolutely. They are more than welcome. If you are able to get um, legitimately on Little Rock Air Force Base, you are welcome in this cluster. Do you currently have any rotary wing, um, re anyone that represents rotary wing aircraft in the cluster? Oh, no. Um, yeah, no. Uh, no, we don't. And th that I know of. Hey. One drone pilot, I think. Yes, yeah, I think, and I think that's it. And uh, I don't know if that drone's rotary or not, or even how that's classified, but maybe that the next cluster they can actually teach that. I can learn something about it. Absolutely. So given that, uh, that it kind of seems like the 189th Airlift Wing is, is kind of the driving force behind this cluster, uh, is it currently C-130 heavy, or are you already seeing a diverse group of aviation professionals? You know, I don't know if we're really C-130 pilot heavy. I think we're no. pretty well balanced. Yeah. Oh, well, then talk about that. Just Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, there's, uh, that's the, so I, I guess C-130 pilot heavy, there's three of us, right? And there's not very many. Right? Yeah. Most, most everybody mm -hmm. is not a pilot in the military and they're just a general aviation pilot. Okay, well, so, yeah. yeah, so definitely kind of, kind of expand on, on that a little bit, so. Um, I'm about to leave. <laughs> okay, yeah. So then I will totally expand on that. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, just um, along. So, so how many people in, 
are in this cluster right About now? 27. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so the majority of those are, are actually general aviation. Yes, ma'am. Everybody's a general aviation pilot that's in it. Yes. 27. So, wow. Yep. And that's just getting the word out. I mean, I don't yeah. know, this may get the word out even more and, and get more folks that Absolutely. are interested in it too. Yes. And kind of relating that to some of your questions, like how's it going to make this safe? That is why this is needed. People want to be safe. They want to learn more. They want to, uh, like Heather was saying, they want to build relationships. And that is what this is all about and stuff. And, yeah, so 20% of us are C-130 pilots. So, and, and that's great because, yeah, you get a whole different perspective uh, from people that fly small twins, uh, um, drones as well, uh, smaller general aviation aircraft, uh, 172s. Old airplanes. Old airplanes. Uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a couple of people that have some vintage aircraft, and uh, yeah, there's uh, uh, someone that uh, uh, that flight instructs on the side. There's there's a whole bunch of uh, people. Um, AMP mechanics, right? There's a couple there's AMP some mechanics involved in too. Yep. So, which, yeah, a, a operation, a safe operational airplane is critical to general aviation. So, uh, and, and really coming, like, from where I come from, in a military world, that is so, so split. Uh, but with general aviation, you could have a private pilot that is responsible to making sure their airplane is airworthy. And there are a lot of rules to make sure that that gets done um, safely. I'm glad you brought up the mechanical aspect of aviation. If the plane's broke, you can be the safest pilot in the world, but uh, how, you know, still have problems. So how will this group affect that aspect of uh, safety and airworthiness? And understanding the plane's broke, that's, that's big too. You know, a lot of times, based on the training that the person received, they may not understand what airworthy really means. And that's the other part that we're going to try to help with as well is, understanding what airworthiness is and how to recognize whether it's airworthy or it's not airworthy. It may meet the letter of the law, but it might not be something you really want to go fly in or take your kids in. Right, and I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, that's a question that you can always ask yourself. Is this something that I would put my, my family in? Is this something I would put my spouse or my children in? Um, you know, would you, would you put your grandmother in it? And I think for right. a lot of people, when you really put it onto that personal level, um, they do kind of rethink safety. And you bring up an excellent point with, you know, there's a baseline of, okay, this is safe, but what can you do to improve on that and just make it even even safer? That's right. And, and, and that is, in essence, what we are doing with the cluster. All right. Well, is there anything else your fans should know? You're going to have fans after this. Well, that's great. And uh, really, I guess uh, what the fans should know that uh, we're open to everybody if you can get on this base you, you please come out for our meetings uh, every uta we meet at uh, 10 o'clock ish uh in building 106 and in the yeah, 10 10 depending on what we have uh for that and yeah if you're interested in aviation it doesn't doesn't have to be fixed wing aviation it doesn't have to be airplanes if you're into balloons drones uh helicopters what have you we uh yeah Oh, what's the Glide, gliders? gliders. Yeah, oh, yes. In the gliding area, uh, Cherry Valley. Yes. A lot of folks that do gliding. Absolutely. So. I had no idea until you said that that we had gliding around here. That's incredible. Okay. So one last time, is there anyone who wouldn't be welcome as a part of this group? Uh, at the risk of saying uh, that someone uh, would not be welcome, do you have a target audience, or you know how broad are you looking to go with uh, with people inside this general aviation? Uh, safety cluster. Man, I'm glad you said that. Uh, everybody's welcome. If you are in, uh, and yeah, and even if you're not interested, if you want to just hang out with us and have coffee and uh, hear uh, terms of aviation and stuff, a specific general aviation, you're more than welcome. Well, thanks for joining us to talk about the general aviation safety cluster. Um, this is, I think, going to be a wonderful benefit to the wing, and I'm so happy that we were able to discuss this uh, during the month of June. Hey, Melody, thanks for having us today. And yes, if anyone wants to join the 189th Airlift Wing General Aviation Assembly Cluster, you can contact me, Major Tom Gillibo, at 501-987-7827 or send me an email on the global. Again, thanks again for having us. So especially thanks to everyone who is out there listening to this podcast. We're really excited uh, about this new platform that we're going to be using at the 189th Airlift Wing, and we can't wait to talk to you next time.
our Minuteman podcast, an airman's podcast, broadcast information about the 189th Airlift Wing, our airmen, and their contributions to our local communities and beyond. We are Mission Ready Airmen, providing premier training to the C-130 and cyber enterprises, capitalizing on partnerships to support the state and defend the nation. Our vision is to be a diverse family of airmen, dedicated, adaptive, and empowered to lead.